This is Paul McKenna for PT Boxing. I'm here today with trainer Joe Gallagher. We're here at the Media and Public Workout in Manchester in the Trafford Centre. Uh, we've just seen Anthony Crawler and Scott Quigg. Um, both looking sharp, Joe, and they're both ready for, for uh, next week. Yeah, this is a good fight tomorrow night. Both of them had great sparring last night, eight and ten rounds apiece. And um, I just thought to myself afterwards, God, if we can both perform like this next week, I'm going to have two fantastic performances and uh, yeah. just holding them now for that week. Little thingy off uh, now and then they're having the weekend off and just holding them on weight. Weight's brilliant. And, yeah. uh, they're, just, they're just there at the moment, just ready to go. Yeah, um, obviously we've seen Crawler was going to fight originally for a world title against Abriel and obviously, you know, things happened and, and, and prevented that but he's got his shot now against Darlies Perez. Have, have you looked into Obviously you've looked into Darlies Perez. What, what do you make of him as a fighter? Yeah, you think, good fight, uh, a very good fighter, I think. I think it's one of two things for this fight. Afterwards, they've got to say, fucking hell, that Perez is fucking class him, isn't it? Because no one's ever seen him, so yeah. no one's judged him. And what I don't want to happen, call the wins ago, that Perez was shy. He isn't shy. Yeah. He's an Olympian, he's a 2008 Olympian. Very good fighter, travelled all over the world. He's red hot, for, um, one of the hot world champions, talented, but he lost to Gunbower in a close fight. So, and, and he's just become world champion. And, when everyone becomes world champion for the first time, it brings a little bit more percentage to them to train with a different mentality. As a world champion now, he's coming to defend his belt. He was a former amateur, so travelling around the world doesn't make much difference to him. Yeah. And um, he'll be coming to prove a point and show that he is one of the, the leading lightweight fighters in the world of boxing today, which I think he is. As you've just said yourself, they had only one defeat in his 33 fights, and that was a close, close fight with Gamboa. So. You know, you know, Andy is the underdog for this fight, and, and, oh, and he's up against it. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Listen, there can be two things on the night. We can get a smack of reality, um, and like all fighters, want to test themselves against the best. Fair play to Eddie Hearn and Sky for getting out of the world title. If he wins it, he's not been given the easiest chance. All right, or like you say, we push him close, and, uh, and we get it. We just don't know on the night. All Anthony's got to do there is go out there. Yeah. Do what I've asked him to do, believe in himself. He's got to have hard moments in there. But I think he's had enough dress rehearsals in his career now to be in the underdog, going into big fights. Obviously, Watson, Liverpool, Lemon, Scotland, yeah. um, uh, underdog when he fought uh, Gavin Reese. Yeah. Last year, John Murray was sort of like his dress rehearsal. He had to go through rock, rocky patches and that. So he's got not going to come up against anything that he's not seen before. Yeah. Bar Perez is a, a bigger hitter. I think he's not 30 of his 20 odd out. Um, punches well with both hands. Vicious left hook on him. And, um, oh, it's, uh, my hands will be in my eyes sometimes <laughs> in the corner on the night. So, uh, listen, but things go to plan. And the way Anthony's story, and the good thing about Anthony, he suits the roles in underdog. I think the only time he was favourite was just the first Eddie Matthews fight. And he yeah. lost, so I'm glad he isn't the favourite. Yeah. The underdog role shows crawl. And not only that, Anthony is a, a prime example for kids out there that have lost and early on in the careers and setbacks. But he's knuckled down and come back and come back and come back. And uh, for the first you don't succeed, try, try again. And Definitely, hopefully yeah. there's a, a silver lining to the, to the story on uh, July the 18th. I hope so, certainly hope so. Um, another one of your fights, obviously, Scott Quigg, yeah. fighting on the bill. Uh, defending his world title, WBA world title against Kiko Martinez. You know we've seen Kiko Martinez and with Carl Frampton twice. Um, do you think this could be you know a good and a good statement for, for Scott to make and, and a good dominant performance by yeah. Scott? Yeah, listen. First and foremost, is getting the win. How we get the win and the result. Yeah. And that, as long as we get the win, if we get the win, look by spectacular knockout. Brilliant. If we get a win on points, great. As long as we get the win, that's yeah. all that matters. If you look at the top five, six of, of, of all. World ratings on the top there. You got Guillermo Rigondo, you got Santa Cruz, Quig, yeah. Frampton. Then the next kid in line is Dene. Uh, Dene has just come back down, but then it's Kiko Martinez. Yeah. So he's fighting the best available super bantamweight that he can fight, yeah. and that's it. You got to remember Kiko. He's used to traveling around the world. He went to Ireland when he was 21, knocked yeah. out Bernard Dunn. Yeah. Went to America, beat Romero, defended in Spain, went to Japan and won. Yeah. Came over to Ireland, give Cal Frampton a good fight both times. So I think. He's coming doing what he's used to doing, being yeah. the underdog and everything else. Scott Queen's got a very live challenger in front of him and he's got to be switched on and he's got to forget what's happened on in the past. He's just got to deal with Kiko Martinez and I, the way Scott Queen's performed is a fantastic sparring, world class sparring and um, I think uh, Scott Queen's going to uh, show everyone what he's capable of. Most definitely, I know uh, you're probably sick of hearing it yourself. Um, I spoke to Eddie about it. Um, do you think if, if Quig comes through successful like like we hope and think he will against Martinez and, and obviously Frampton wins his next fight, do you think that, that fight can be made, Joe? It won't happen, no. No? Definitely. That, that fight won't happen this year. No. I think after this fight, 
I should never say too much, but we've got plans for another fight. Okay. I think Frampton will have a, a mandatory yeah. uh, shot unless they decide to Val Heyman now to give the belt up. But I can't see that quick Frampton fight. If it at all happens till 2016, listen, Carl Frampton wants to fight. Scott wants to fight. Uh, I think Carl Frampton's got to look a million dollars over there in America. Or yeah. for a win with an out eight rounds. Yeah. And it'd be fantastic exposure for him and good for him. But the kids both want the fight. There's yeah. only one person stopping this fight, and that's Barry McGuigan. Yeah. And that's it. So we've one and a half million pounds was given to Carl Frampton, offered to him to take the fight. Yeah. That's $2.2 .2 million. That's more money than some of Mayweather's opponent get for him. Yeah. I'm hearing yeah, that's more money than what Tyson Fury is getting for Klitschko. Yeah. So how do you turn that down and say it isn't big enough? But anyway, enough about that. Yeah. Just wish Carl all the best over in America. Yeah. Scott Queen's got to do, and it's great in boxing to have rivalries. Rick Hatton, a junior witter, to understand Ben, a Jewbank, and Frampton Queen's just another one of them. And someday down the line, they will fight, but it won't be this year. OK, well, just a quick word as well. Um, you know, Quig and Colin are not your only fighters on the bill. You've got Marcus Morrison, yeah. uh, Jose Burton, anyone else? No, that's it, just gym? the four. Just that's fucking enough for this that, night, mate. That, I mean. Them two themselves, but both, both looking yeah, well. Yeah, Ophi's 12 and 0, it's his 13th fight now. Get this out of the way, and both him and Callum Johnson, they're ready for British titles, Commonwealth titles, like heavyweight, so just get this one out of the way. Marcus Morrison, 5 and 0, kid off the estate. I've had yeah. done 500 tickets for this show. It's having his sixth fight. Matchroom have just signed him as well, so... Uh, He's a, he's a promising young kid, but he's a year off of fighting for anything yeah, yeah. at all. He's, he's just a, a kid in the gym, soaking up all the experience, all the um, big fight experience, and yeah. that'll stand him in good stead down the road. OK, Joel, thanks a lot for your time today, and uh, best luck for all the fighters Brilliant, in the future. Brilliant, cheers, good Thank to see you. you. Thanks for coming down.